In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I edited this photo on the screen right here of Keandra from a Christmas photo shoot that we did last month. I am currently working on a behind the scenes video from that photo shoot, so that is coming soon. Before I continue though, I do wanna let you know about today's sponsor, which is Adorama. Adorama is an industry leading retailer that has been serving photography, videography, and audio customers for almost 50 years now. Their motto is everyone is creator and they do their best to unleash that creator within us all by providing us with the tools and expertise necessary to get the job done. I actually personally shop at Adorama for both the great deals on products I use and recommend but also the great customer service on those products as well. If you find yourself interested in any product that I talk about in today's video, check the links that will be in the description area below and be sure to use those links if you decide to order. Here on the screen is the unedited version of this photo of Keandra. So let's go ahead and just start with the edit. The first thing I wanna do is increase the exposure to maybe 0.25. Whenever I adjust the exposure, I usually do it in 0.25s. So that's gonna be 0 0.25, 0 0.5. 75 and then a full stop at one, but I feel like 0.25 looks pretty good right now. The second thing I want to do is increase the color temperature because I feel like it's a little too cool. So I am going to adjust it quite a bit to maybe 4850. It does look pretty good in everything else that isn't her. I will correct the color temperature on her after a couple of other adjustments first. I feel like at 4850 it looks pretty good. Maybe I'll change the color temperature to be a little bit greener or a little bit more magenta actually, because I feel like it's a little too green. What I'm primarily focusing on right now is everything but her. So that's gonna be the background. Now I'm gonna scroll down and do a little bit of sharpening at 60 where it says amount. And then at the very bottom, I'm gonna go to the calibration blue primary saturation section and change it to 80. Two colors do usually get saturated a little too much, which is gonna be the oranges and the blues. So I'm gonna scroll up to the HSL section and reduce the blue to maybe negative 20. And then the oranges, I will go to maybe negative 15. I think this is the only adjustments that I need to do that are global adjustments. These ones here on the side, I'm gonna get the masking section. I'm gonna go to the masking section, which is gonna be Chef W on a PC. I'm gonna click on that. And then now I'm gonna select just the subject, which is Keandra, of course. I'm gonna click on that and it is gonna select just her. Everything in red is everything that's selected right now. And now the biggest adjustment that I wanna make to her is of course the color temperature. So I will go to maybe negative 25, start there. And I feel like it's a little too cool, too cold there. So I'm gonna go to negative 20. And I feel like it's pretty good there. Maybe a little bit lower at maybe negative 18. And then I do feel like she is a little tad bit green. So I want to increase the temperature or the tint actually to maybe 0.4 or four and I feel like at this level she actually looks pretty good and I guess the only thing I'll do now is maybe you know what I was going to increase the exposure but I'm actually going to do that with a separate adjustment brush because of the more gradual effect that I can create when it's not just her selected so now what I'm going to do is go to the plus click on that click on brush and then I'm going to increase the size of my brush by the mouse the scroll on it I'm going to just kind of just paint slightly over her maybe a little bit around her see if I can raise the exposure slightly and I'm going to get it at maybe 0.2 and I feel like now it created a little bit of a gradual kind of increase in exposure over her face so just a tad bit a little bit more exposure on her face maybe 0.25 and then I'll leave it there because I always want the focus to be on the subject's face I will get one more adjustment brush and just paint on the leg area right here because I feel like the legs are a little too dark. So maybe I'll get a little bit of the jeans here and then stick to the area right there and then maybe get a little bit of the next to the legs. And I'm gonna just now increase the exposure to maybe point, I'm actually to keep it at one and then let's see if I can get that exposure. Yeah, I think it's good how it looks like right here. So let me just show you guys the before and after. So that's gonna be the before and that's gonna be the after. And I feel like now it looks pretty good exposure wise. I do want to increase the exposure of just the background right now. So what I'm gonna do is go to the plus and then go to select background. So that's gonna be everything but her. So you guys can see everything in red. That is the area that I selected. And I just wanna increase the shadows just a little bit to maybe 15. And I feel like it's good now because the background was so dark and her hair is dark and I should have used kind of a separation light, another light to just light up the hair. To separate it from the background, I needed to kind of figure out a way to make the background stand out away from the hair basically so that they don't blend in a little bit too much. And the way that I just did that right now was increasing the shadows of just the background. I'm gonna get one more brush and then kind of just paint around the hair and then raise the exposure and maybe the shadows of just the hair. So I am gonna fast forward through that right now. Okay, so here is gonna be the before of the hair and here's the after. So I did increase the hair exposure to 0.8 and the shadows to 15. The last thing I'll probably do here in Lightroom is just go to the eyes and then click the plus and go to another brush and then just go over the dark eyes and then make the eyes just a little bit brighter. 
I actually do have a preset for dark eyes and that actually worked pretty good. So you can see all the different adjustments that I did to the eyes right there on the side. And now I'm gonna zoom out, take one last look at this image. And I think after all the adjustments that we did, it looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna take this image into Photoshop and continue there. Actually, before I go into Photoshop, I do want to show you guys the behind the scenes. So that is going to be this image on the screen right here. This is the setup. I was using a continuous light. I forget the name, but I'll throw it on the screen right now. And then I was using that light with a 34 inch beauty dish. I want to say the 34 inch beauty dish that Cheetah makes the Cheetah Stand QSB 34. If it's not the 34, then it's the 42. Now that we're here in Photoshop, I am going to run an action that I did kind of create to kind of just speed up the edit. That's going to create a frequency separation layer, a dodge and burn section, and then also a section for manipulating the color. If you guys are interested in, in kind of purchasing that, let me know in the comments below if you guys are watching this edit. It is called Time Saver, so I'm going to just run that now. And it is going to give you a little bit of direction here. And then I am going to leave it at 5 for the Gaussian Blur on the frequency separation. And then again, here's some more direction. I'm going to click Continue and then another Continue. And then now I'm going to just kind of minimize the color section and then dodge and burn. But I will get a lasso tool and then see what areas on the skin I want to kind of soften up a tiny bit. Kendra actually has great skin, so I don't really need to do much on her skin. If anything, maybe just a little, little tiny bit on the neck. I do have it at a feather of four up here and that's going to make a difference in terms of softening areas so i'm going to go to filter blur gaussian blur and i'm going to change the brush or the radius to 10 and that is doing just a tiny bit of softening on the neck so that's exactly what i wanted to do nothing too crazy and i don't think any other area needs it but i usually always do it to the legs so let me just see how that looks like on the legs when i add a little bit of softening on the leg okay so it is a bit of a hit and miss whenever i use gaussian blur on the legs for some reason so i don't really like how the results look like so i'm going to deselect that and then get a wet brush. You can see all the different settings that I have on here. Not the wet brush. I always say wet brush when I mean to say the mixer brush. So that's gonna be right there where the brushes are. And now you can use all the different settings I have on top and then just paint up and down just slightly on the leg. And that usually gives a nice softening effect on the legs that isn't too weird. So I'm gonna just do that. And then I already did it. So now I can see the before and after on the leg, a little bit of subtle softness. Now what I'm gonna do is just see if any other area needs to be softened and I don't think that's the case. So again, that was frequency separation and dodge and burn is just gonna be literally brightening and darkening areas. I feel like underneath the eyes and the eye bags is something I do wanna tackle. Aside from that, I feel like I'll just add a little bit of extra contrast that I usually do by brightening up the limbs in the center and then darkening the side of the limbs. I am gonna fast forward through this, but it's pretty much what I do. I always brighten the center of the limb and then darken the side of it. The reason why I have micro dodge and micro burn here is because micro dodge and burn is gonna be when you zoom in, like areas underneath the eyes, the eye bags, that's gonna be the dodge, the micro dodge, and then anything I do wanna darken is gonna be the micro burn. And everything that's kind of zoomed out like right now, everything that dodge or burn is gonna be global dodge, global burn. I am gonna be using the black and white help layer that's just a simply a black and white adjustment layer with the yellows and the reds kind of brought down a bit so you can really see all the non-consistent skin tone of the skin so you can correct it with the dodge and burn and i will be using a soft brush so that's going to be at flow one percent and i'm gonna right click on the screen to bring up these options and i do want it to be at zero percent hardness i am making sure that i am painting white on this mask over here for the micro dodge Here's the before and then here is the after. So now I'm gonna zoom out and I do like the results of that. Maybe if anything, I'll just bring it out a tiny bit down to like maybe 70. So now here's the before and after. And now I'm gonna zoom all the way out. And now I'll do a little bit of uh, the global dodge and the global burn. So like I said before, I usually get the brush tool and I go towards the center of the limb. So that's gonna be her leg here. And I am making sure that I paint on not just her leg, but also the, the short, whatever she's wearing. I'm gonna do that right there. And now here's the before and after. And it's a little too strong. So I'm just gonna go to a little bit lower at maybe 60. And then I'm gonna get the burn, the global burn, and then do the same thing, just a tad bit on the edge here. And then basically making a small, small gradient of darkness at the edge of the leg. So here's the before and after. The actual before and after. So here's the after, here's the before and the after. Now what I'm gonna do is take one last look of the entire image to see if there's anything I wanna dodge or burn. Maybe I'll do that extra dodge like I mentioned, or the extra burn that I mentioned on the shirt area right here, because I feel like it's a little too bright. Here's the before and the after of the dodge, or actually the burn with what I just did right now. So I just wanna show you guys that before 
and after. And now I feel like the image just needs to change the color a little bit. So I'm gonna open up this colors and I do have, I think it's color balance on the last one, but usually I have different areas in case I want to manipulate specific areas like just the background or just the skin or if I feel like one specific area of the skin is a little bit off from the rest of the skin tone of the area of the skin, then I have one more selective color adjustment layer for that called skin fix. I have the first background color selective color adjustment layer selected right now. So now I'm gonna just have fun with the layers till I like how everything but Keandra herself looks like. Right now Keandra does look a little bit weird so I'm gonna go and paint the effect off of her skin by painting black. I'm gonna change the flow to a little bit higher and then just paint over her face. I feel like the skin is a little bit off. I feel like this her face is different than the rest of her body. So I am gonna just skip to the skin fix and make sure that I can kind of correct the skin tone. So I feel like her hands are a bit redder and then her skin itself is a little bit more orangey, kind of yellowy. So I'm gonna paint just on her skin and then mess around with the adjustment layer, the selective color adjustment layer till it gets to a color that's closer to her hand color. Okay, so here is the before and then here's the after. And I did do quite a bit of adjustments to the whites, the yellows and the reds for just kind of the head and shoulder area because I felt like I was a little too orangey looking. And now I'm gonna go and get one last adjustment layer right here, the selective color adjustment called skin color and see how that looks like. So I'm gonna invert the mask, paint it on just her skin and then make one final adjustment on ter in terms of the skin color. And finally, here is the before of after I adjusted the color and then the after of after I adjusted the color. I feel like everything looks pretty good now and that's pretty much it. If anything, I might do one more kind of two different things to add more contrast to the image. So that's gonna be getting the levels adjustment layer and then bringing this left side over here up to maybe, I don't know, usually five, four to eight. And then I usually get another curves adjustment layer and bring it up a tiny bit. I'm gonna reduce the opacity just a tiny bit, maybe to point fifty or maybe to 15%. And then now I'm gonna get both of these together by holding down shift while holding, while selecting that top one and then holding down shift, I click on the bottom one and then hit control or command G and then show you guys the before and after of that extra layer of uh, contrast. And now I'm pretty much done with the edits. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I wanna say one last thanks to Adoram for sponsoring this video. If you guys have any other questions about this edit, let me know in the comments below, but that's pretty much it for this video. Take care guys, and I'll see you in the very next video.